there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be showing you three different ways to create a look. Now this was kind of inspired from my paint swiping video and so I want to try three different ways that we can kind of recreate that. Now first of all, you can basically use whatever you have. These are things that I think most people would have in their stash. Now I'm going to be using, for the first technique, we are just using some strips. I'm going to go through this fairly fast because you've seen it before likely and it's pretty straightforward. I am going to use some double-sided adhesive. This is the Stick It adhesive because I am going to be die cutting this. So when I want to die cut things, I make sure that I have the thinnest double-sided adhesive that uh, possible so that it makes it not too tricky when we're trying to run the dies through. So I just chose some pinky, reddish, orangey kind of colors, peachy colors, anything that I had near me that was already cut into strips. And I am just going to randomly put these down. Now, actually, in the end, when I finished this, my piece of adhesive that I popped down, it was just a spare one that was sitting in the back. I didn't measure it out, and it actually ends up being wider than my um, the strips that I had. So, <laughs> because I, A, didn't want to find the same colors and try and cut more strips, and B, I forgot to trim down or do any sort of measuring with my adhesive, I'm actually going to trim this panel down and just cut along the sides with scissors. This is no big loss, it doesn't really bother me, um, and it just is what it is. When there's a problem, we just tend to solve it. So you can see this is the first way. You could also change up how you wanted to put this across your card, or just use long strips to begin with, and don't do it on a card front, and then you'd have lots of options too. Now, a second way that we're going to do this is with ink. Now for this one, because I wanted to make a um, baby card for this one, I have chosen some light kind of pastel almost colors, and I'm going to use some mint tape. This is just some low-tech tape. You could use masking tape. You could just use copy paper with some removable adhesive. I am going to get two pieces of this, pop this across on an angle. I am going to make all of these cards look somewhat similar because I want there to be kind of a good comparison between all the materials that you can use. You could also use any, any inks at all that you have to do this technique. Speaking of doing it this way, you don't have to use inks. I mean, you could use um, watercolors, you could use paints, you could use alcohol markers. You would want something that wouldn't bleed through if you're going to use alcohol markers. Uh, I'm not sure that the mint tape would be good if you were to go back and forth over it a few times. I'm sure it would bleed through with the alcohol markers, but where there's a will, there's a way. Now, I'm just shifting this down. I find it easier to have all different size stripes rather than trying to estimate uh, having exactly the same stripes, and then that way I don't have to worry if it does look different. I'm using some Minty Fresh, some Over the Moon, some Piggyback, and then Clear Skies, which is the blue. Now, I always test my finger dobbers before I bring them to the paper. I know that the Minty Fresh in particular is uh, very saturated with ink at the moment when I re-inked it. Um, and so even just those little things can ruin my project if I kind of come straight to the paper. So often I will, that's why I have that scrap piece behind it as well. I can dab down the bottom, check how much ink is already on my finger dauber so that I'm not going to kind of bring it to the project and have a big splotch to begin with. Now, even though I'm using some different colors and things here, I'm able to reuse the mint tape throughout this little project here on this piece. So it just used those two pieces, which is pretty good. And this is what we've roughly got uh, to come out with. As I said, you could use lots of different mediums to create the same look. And I'm just kind of showing you three different ones today. I'm just going to flip over that scrap piece of paper and we are going to move on to our last one. And in my opinion, this one is the most addicting. <laughs> so this one is going to be with paint. I am going to use two fresh pieces of mint tape. This tape is the perfect low tech tape in my opinion. And I always put down the first piece and then I put down the second piece and then I always readjust the first piece. Why is that? <laughs> but it just never seems to be in exactly the right place. Um, so I'm just trying to get a stripe down on an angle. As I said, I prefer not to measure things. I pretty much just eyeball. Now I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this. I have got some of these little Dina Wakely paints here. I, when I needed to refresh my paints after about 15 or so years, I chose to go with these ones. I like the um, viscosity of them. I love the 
um, colors, the color range available. I like how they work and react. And I also like the little size bottles. They're around, I think maybe $2.80 or so US each. And that feels really affordable to me. Um, instead of having to buy big, bigger containers, it also means that storage is really easy. So I'm just taking an old gift card or a, um, club card and swipe once right through the middle now i actually did a video on this paint swiping this is a fun technique and very addictive so i'm going to peel off my mint tape before it dries and then this is what we are left with i like this look and of course i have mixed some kind of colors that you maybe shouldn't mix today and we still didn't really get brown because we just swiped through once so then from here, I am going to do another one just because I was enjoying the paint so much. Um, this time I am going to do just straight swiping through with less dots. And this is super easy, super quick, and anyone can do this with any paints that you have. I did just want to quickly say something about the paints that I'm using. So the colors that I chose were the green, the orange, the blue, and a pink. So thinking about colors that are opposites on the color wheel and are beside each other, if I mixed the orange and the green together, then they are going to make mud. But if I put the blue and the green beside each other, and then the blue and the pink beside each other, and then the pink and the orange beside each other, all of those colors are going to mix nicely. So when doing this technique, I wouldn't put the orange and the green next to each other because that would be the most likely way to create mud. Now all I'm doing here, this is not fancy, I'm just putting down a little blob of paint um, just so that it covers that full stripe that I've created and all I'm going to do is pull the paint across with that gift card. Now I didn't do this evenly, <laughs> I think that's evident. Uh, pulling down on an angle just wasn't working with my brain for whatever reason but I still have lots of paint left on my little gift card here so I'm going to um, keep that and do that for the next one. I still think this made a really cool pattern, uh, so I'm going to keep that one and I really like it. So again, pop down some mint tape and readjust because I never get it right the first time. Add a tiny little bit more paint um, into here just so that I know there is going to be plenty and then try and get this one more even. This time I end up going a few times through it and the colors blend a little bit more and I kind of wanted a little bit more green. I, for whatever reason, was not able to get very even here. So I did it a little bit, and we've also created a little bit of purple between the pink and the blue, which is absolutely fine. Um, but other than that, it's a cool stripe of paint through. It's not perfectly even, but that doesn't bother me either, because we're going to be adding some techniques to these, which will kind of make this the background. So these are the four that we kind of created today. Of course, that one would sit on there kind of like that. Then we have our dots for our paint swiping and then just our swiped lines with the paint. And then we have the inked one as well. So all of these are a similar look, but using different uh, mediums, depending on what you have handy and available or what you are most comfortable with. I thought I would show you three or four ways that you can create this look. And this is super, super easy. And these cards end up being really easy, but I love this look. This is one of my go-tos when I'm not really sure what I want to create or I'm not sure of which design and colors I should go for for the occasion. So all I've done is picked out some circle dies. These are the Infinity Circle Dies from Hero Arts. I've said it before, but layering dies are a great investment, the stacking dies, uh, stacking die sets of kind of the main shapes. In my opinion, things like circles, um, maybe hearts, rectangles, squares, those sorts of things are always going to be extremely handy in card making or paper crafting. So I chose out a couple of different size circles because I eyeballed all of my stripes so that means that they're all different widths and I just want to use whichever circle kind of fits almost at the full width of the stripe but not quite. I don't want it to be bigger than the stripe so just whatever works here. Then I'm going to bring in my little center pieces. I'm going to use two different things. One is the Curvy Leaves from Pink Fresh Studio, an absolute favorite of mine forever and ever. And I'm going to use this little single kind of uh, leaf that will fit up there. And then I'm also going to be using the Honeybee Stacking Hearts. And I went with the Honeybee ones only because I like the shape of those hearts. There seems to be a lot of different shapes that the hearts can take on. And you can kind of get a more 
squeeze together thinner one with sharper kind of points up the top you can get the wider ones you can get kind of all sorts of swervy ones and I think I just looked through and found the one that I kind of liked the shape I thought would be the most versatile and went with that so I put my two dies, my circle and my little leaf, and I have die cut through the center. I'm going to pop these to the side and carry on and go through these. I have sped up this video. We're going to go through it quickly because you get the gist of what we are doing. You could find any plain and simple shape that can go in the middle of your circle here. I think a circle is really nice. I didn't want to add too much detail. I didn't want uh, the rings or any kind of... Um, edging to the circles I want to keep this super plain and just really kind of almost clean and simple cards um, but really easy to create and as I said this is one of my go-to's for when I am just not sure of a pattern or a layout for a card that is going to fit the occasion and I generally find that this works every time so I for this one did the love heart and then moving on to the next one I decided to end up keeping this one as is I could have changed it around but once I had cut down my little card front to now measure three and a half by four and a quarter inches. Um, so that's going to be my little card front panel. And then I cut down my strips to match that. And then I'm going to use the bigger heart with the bigger circle. I can put these through at the same time. And because we use that nice thin stick it uh, die cutting sheets, it means that I'm able to die cut through all of these layers really easily and no problem at all. It also means using the mint tape, the low tech tape, that when I pull this off, I'm not going to tear the cardstock underneath, which at this point would be really frustrating. So for this one, we are going to add another layer. Now I could have um, added my little inking layer like I usually do. However, the piece that we have created, the die cut piece to go on the front, would have ended up covering up some of it. So I decided to add an actual layer of cardstock. I made it super duper thin so it really only stands out when you put it onto that white background. You can barely see it here on the background of my table. Um, but I'm using some liquid glue, the Ranger Multi Medium in the matte finish, to pop down this card front. This one is going to go flat. And then I pop in the extra little piece. This is just so I can get everything lined up. And the stripes are going to be continuous for my little love heart. I do pop this one up on a little bit of foam tape. Then pop this in and then take this little um, tool to wedge out the front bit and then I'm going to pop this down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and then I'm just going to do this step to all three of them and then move along to the final steps as well. So there's number one. I'm going to do these all a little bit differently just to give you some options and we're also going to do a shaker card. Now for this one, I'm just going to add the back panel up on some foam tape. I am not making this one into a shaker just yet. I think this is going to be the baby card and this one is just going to sit up nicely when you have a white on white background which is the kind of the top half of the card and the bottom little bit of the card. I like to have it up on foam just because I feel like um, it separates the two a little bit more and you can see some definition um, between the card front and the card uh, base. So then I did the same trick, made sure these were pretty much lined up. I got the heart a little bit wonky, so I just need to fix that up. But apart from that, uh, this one is just that easy peasy step. We're not quite finished, but... Um, we are just moving through these assembly style and once this one's done, I'm going to move on to the last one and I was going to do the last one just the same as I had done this one, but I thought to change things up just a little bit, I would end up making this one into a shaker card and this is obviously really, really easy with this style of card. It's the perfect opportunity. So I've got my little leaf here ready to go and I'm just going to pick out all the um, little inside pieces of this one too. I start putting the foam on the back because I thought I would just pop this panel up too. So I popped one piece of foam down and it was right about here that I thought, actually, maybe I will make these different. So all I'm going to do is add in some double-sided tape around the circle here. This doesn't have to be tight fitting because all we're doing is attaching the acetate to this. I do like to do all four sides and then I know that nothing is going to move around or kind of be loose. I like it and uh, attached nicely to the front panel. I am just using some Hero Arts acetate, but anything, including some recycled packaging, is going to work perfectly here. And then I cut a little square that's going to fit over top perfectly. I did cut all of my nails, so now I'm having to use the little tool to get my double-sided tape off. So if you're having trouble, that's a quick little tip for you. 
Also, another little tip, if you are trying to go round a circle with your foam strips, remove the release paper from both sides of it, and this will mean it will curve without any buckling, which is much, much easier. These ones, I need to make sure that they match up perfectly so that my shaker elements cannot escape. Now, because this one is quite colourful on the front, I didn't want to add any crazy colours behind it. I just am going to add these iridescent uh, shapes here. Now, there is all sorts in here from teeny, teeny, tiny ones to kind of bigger flowers. So I used the little scoop on the other end of the pick tool there to just grab right from the very bottom. And that's where all the kind of glittery, dusty uh, and then smaller particles of the iridescent um, bits are as well. Then I'm just going to put some plain white backing on that. This just makes life a little bit easier for me. Remember all of the adhesive is exposed so that we could um, get the tape to go around the circle. And there is a perfect amount of shakiness to this card. It just gives a little bit of extra fun. Now I can continue putting foam around the outside. I have taken off all the release paper, popped it onto my card base, and I keep shaking it because that's fun. <laughs> and then I add some liquid glue here, and then I will pop this onto the acetate on the front. And then we're going to come back and finish off some of these cards. So just while this is drying, I'm going to sit an acrylic block on top because sometimes uh, liquid glue doesn't love adhering to acetate. So you want to give it a minute to dry without everything moving around. So this is where we're at so far, and I'm going to keep this super, super simple. We are going to add some of the Paper Rose All Occasion sentiments here to a couple of these. And again, as I said, this just makes life so much easier, but you can definitely stamp out your sentiments. And I honestly think adding these little sentiments to a couple of these finishes these cards so perfectly. This one is going to say, Welcome Baby, and this means it can be for a boy or a girl. I am so short of baby cards at the moment, and we are coming into baby season. So I have noticed that my family are grabbing for these more and more, and I have said I will make some. But you can make these for any occasion, honestly. I think this is just really sweet and simple and pretty quick to make, especially if you are only making one or not using all the different styles like I did today. Then the next one here is an anniversary card, and this one is going to say happy anniversary. It has the gorgeous heart in the middle, all the right colors, and going straight across that little heart breaks it up perfectly. It, the sentiment is small, but your eye is still drawn to it without taking away from the whole background that we have created. So I'm just snipping off the ends so it is nice and a little angled cut there. And then this one is going to go straight across the front too. For the last one, I kind of looked at it and decided that actually I would leave it be and not end up in adding any sentiment at all. Sometimes with these ones, I end up stamping a sentiment on the inside when I know the occasion. Other times, I will just write my message and I'm happy with that. So for these ones, you could also add some little gems, some water droplets, some Nuvo drops, some enamel dots. But I decided just I like them as is. Pretty clean and simple. So I hope that you have enjoyed all the different ways that you can create this look today. I love these gorgeous simple cards. So let me know if this is your kind of style down in the comment section down below. I have all of the links as usual to the products are listed down below. If you would like to support my channel, I also do the buy me a coffee. The link to that is down below as well. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you are well and taking care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you.